Hey Ken, guess what? What? We as YouTubers aren't special snowflakes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I am. No, for real, I was doing research for my university project about vaudeville shows in the late 19th century and they are pretty similar to YouTube. Sounds like boring history, to be honest. This boring history is called cultural studies and it's still a red hot topic. What if I told you that our interest, entertainment and humor pretty much didn't change in the past century? You had my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Let's start at the very beginning. Vaudeville theaters grew out of the relentless change that America faced in the early 19th century. It served a particular function during a phase of immigration and colonization. But before radio, movies and television, vaudevillians were the entertainers our ancestors chose first and most. At a time of revolutionary change in America, they showed us who we were and who we were becoming. This is their story. The story of the stars and the thousands of others who never escaped the small towns and small pay, who lost everything but their memories and their dreams. With all the immigrants, different cultures and traditions from exotic parts of the world, it shaped what one could see on vaudeville stages. A huge variety of acts, each one of them not longer than 20 minutes. The singer is Italian, his act is Asian, his musical instrument is Hawaiian, and his song was written by a nice Jewish boy. Vaudeville reflected its time. A time when America was becoming a melting pot, whether some Americans liked it or not. All those things that were not valuable to the, to the official culture were very, very valuable to the pop culture. Their songs, their sounds, their linguistic mistakes. Everything was usable. Tell me right now. Now is the time to Hey, hey Maya, what, what? I got an idea. What is it? Weber and Fields made a career out of the assimilation mistakes of every ethnicity, but their own. They were born Orthodox Jews, but they never played Jews. They started in blackface, were Irishmen sometimes, and became America's best-known Germans. No, no, you dare spoil the thing. Yeah, you, you dare can do this it's against the law, huh? It's against the law. Well, sue me. YouTube, a global video sharing website as we know it today, is basically a product of the same nature. In this case, globalization. And even though one can upload unlimited hours of videos to YouTube, they are more likely successful with an average length of 7 to 15 minutes. YouTube made it possible to bring all sorts of people in a discourse, no matter of their ethnicity or social background. Not only vaudevillians love to serve those cultural stereotypes, YouTubers like Flula Borg built their whole career around this exact cliché. <laughs> Hello, Hello and welcome, and welcome to, to a new, new episode, episode of, of German, German with a German, German with Flula. The platform invites everyone around the world to create unique content that comes in many different shapes and forms. Broadcast yourself. YouTube statistics of the year 2015 state that the site counts over 1 billion users. Henry Jenkins, a professor of communication, journalism and cinematic arts at the University of Southern California, wrote an article about YouTube and the vaudeville aesthetics. And he is sure that in the not too distant future, social historians will want to examine the current contents of YouTube as a microcosm of contemporary culture, much as vaudeville's popular performances still yield rich insights into the culture of the last turn of the century. Very often people will say, well, it was sensational, you know, as a negative. Like, what could be more important than, than giving people sensations? Taking ideas and making them felt sensational. Content creators on YouTube will often face the same prejudices. Short and light-hearted videos with the only purpose of shallow entertainment, seen and soon forgotten. But even if you are a nobody, you get the chance to change small bits of the world on YouTube. Jenna Marbles is with about 60,139,000 subscribers, one of the most popular women on YouTube.
comes to diversity and variety of performances and acts, YouTube is in no way inferior to vaudeville shows. It seems like the natural human curiosity never changed during the past centuries. At best, we just extended the line of what's still acceptable in current society. Vaudeville's success was due to a simple concept. If you don't like this, wait a few minutes. And you may like this. Akbar is awesome cause he never calls you names. He never really calls you anything cause he's just a corn. If you don't like comedic songs about being a friend of a corn cup, you might prefer the jackass side of YouTube where overdrawn characters like Filthy Frank dress up in a pink full suit to rap offensive punchlines while cooking a Japanese noodle soup. I still masturbate while eating top ramen at a faster rate and the bigger quantities accounts as rape when I'm slurping at this unbelievable pace. There is a place for every type of content on YouTube, excluding pornography and violence glorifying videos. Seeing those acts, those artists on stage, those flesh and blood people, and you flesh and blood up in that second balcony, with all those other people in the audience, also afforded a sense of community. It was communal, the many enjoying the artiste. Pastor and his successors created the form. Changing times provided the audience. In the cities and eventually across the continent, all that was needed was people with talent. Many of them came from that audience, commercializing their existing skills, developing new ones, following their heroes into the light. What inspired you to start making videos? Well, shit. I've always wanted to make videos since I was in middle school. Because that was around the time I discovered Shane Dawson and Brittany Louise Taylor and all of them. And I thought, I can do that. My inspiration was coming across a YouTuber named Syndicate. Probably watching other YouTubers. Because um, I've been watching like YouTubers for like ages now. And I was like, oh, I'd, I want to be like them. Vaudeville was a chance to make a living or an opportunity to get famous. Considering where most vaudevillians were coming from, the majority of them were simply doing it to survive. June Havoc and her sister, who became Gypsy Rose Lee, were in vaudeville because their mother was in it. And she was in it, so she said, for the money. And that was true of everybody. They were businessmen. They were incidentally artists. You know, they weren't going for art, they were going for survival. It was all about money. I mean, Groucho and my father never got past the sort of fifth or sixth grade. Buster Keaton had exactly one day of formal education. So they had no possibilities in American life, although they became the metaphors of uh, American abundance. The same goes for YouTube. Some content creators started making videos as a hobby and got famous through consistency or a viral hit. Still, when a YouTuber creates videos to make a living out of it, the art suffers to a great extent and the accusation that they are just in for the money is constantly left hanging in the air. A high ratio of people in the audience isn't even aware how YouTubers earn their salaries. People ask YouTubers all the time, is YouTube your job? Wait, so like, do you get paid? But like, how much do you make? I heard you get $1 per subscriber. The truth is that YouTubers get paid by the number of people who view the ads before and during their video. And they get paid even more if you click those ads. Oh wait, hold on, there's something in my pocket. Oh, look, it's all the honesty. And YouTubers also get paid by doing brand deals, many of which I'm sure you're aware of and are super annoyed of hearing about. And of course, they also make money by doing live performances and selling merchandise, etc, etc. Authenticity is always critically examined in the YouTube community because it's a main tool to bond with the fans and therefore staying relevant and ultimately true to yourself as an artist. I'm proud of some that the brother and I, or me, get the opportunity to, to do what we wanted to do on stage. And nothing, nothing 
took that away from us, you know. We did it all. The success of an artist always depends on his or her relationship to the audience. And in such a fast moving business like vaudeville or YouTube, the direct feedback is something special and also unique compared to other media like the TV, which displaced vaudeville in the early 20th century. I feel like as this channel has grown, it's been a constant tr struggle with trying to connect with you bros in a good way. It's, it's really hard having so many fans. It used to be so much easier. Keep showing your support. I do appreciate it. I'm always appreciated of it. I'm never gonna stop being appreciated of it and I'm never gonna stop thank you for it anyway. Really, just thank you for being there and being a bro. Uh, it's awesome, you're awesome, and I love you. So here we go, bro -fiers. Remember, that audience was also an antagonist, as well as a friend. The old time uh, vaudevillians. I killed that audience. Well, what happened? I slew them. I murdered them. The words they use are violent words. And so there was a hostility and love, hostility and a hunger, a need, a yearning for adulation. At the same time, there was both. It's very personal. A love-hate relationship was there. Sometimes we simply killed the audience. They loved it, and sometimes I couldn't get off fast enough. When I go out in front of an audience, I'm going to a lover. I said, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to lay them out in the eyes because nobody, I said, is going to take it away from me. You might think now that the feedback of a theater audience will always be the most direct and confronting, but if you take a look into the comment sections of large channels, you can easily see the immediate feedback of their audiences. It won't take a lot of time to find the urge for adulation on YouTube as well. Celebrities are basically created by the audience itself. Daniel Borstin wrote in his book The Image or What Happened to the American Dream, the celebrity is a person who is well known for his well knownness, which is often misquoted as a celebrity is someone famous for being famous. YouTube celebrities are called PewDiePie, Glozell or Shane Dawson. To cover up the gossip around the life of the big channels on YouTube, a whole new genre developed to be the hottest news source channels on the site. The audience is always craving for all sorts of news about their stars. Another point that might prove that vaudeville's inner structure is very similar to YouTube's, just transferred to a new medium, is that both struggle with the same obstacles and fears. With content thieves leading the way, neither a YouTuber nor a vaudevillian is immune to copycats. The most successful vaudevillians, no matter what their ethnicity, had one reoccurring problem. Reverend Fields had the problem for 60 years. Chop the knife down the oyster's throat. Their shapes, their costumes, and their act were instantly recognizable. No, you don't rush the duck. You get a can full of beer. There is no beer in this. And I can't do the trick. You get the Except this isn't Reverend Fields. It's two other guys. They call themselves impressionists or impersonators, but the impersonated call them thieves. Hey! YouTube's most recent problem are super fast growing reaction channels who basically just react to other channels content. The problem with it is that those channels play the whole video of another creator and film themselves reacting to it in a corner of the original video. The second point is the constant fear of staying relevant to your audience. Vaudeville was appointed to fall victim to the new media like television, radio and film. YouTube, however, has become such a huge influencer in today's media that traditional media like certain television shows also air their content online to reach a bigger audience. For that reason, big television news channels and late night shows like BBC or Jimmy Fallon pop up regularly on the trending page of YouTube. I never could make it in television because I could not remember. Vaudevillians were so used to what they were doing that you threw something new at them they get lost. My name is Michael Buckley. Ten years ago, I started a pop culture show called The What the Buck Show, where I covered celebrity news. Uh, I was a top 10 YouTuber from 2007 till around 2012. Um, I was one of the first YouTubers uh, to make a living off of the site. I'm just not as into pop culture as I used to be. That format just doesn't fit on YouTube in 2016 as like a full-time this, it just doesn't. Um, 
And if I'm being honest with you, I know I knew this a long time ago. I saw the writing on the wall like in 2011. I knew it. I knew I needed to change my format. YouTube told me. My YouTube network advised me. You guys in the comment section told me it was time to evolve, time for other things. In conclusion, we can find a lot of similarities in the construction of vaudeville shows and the setup of YouTube as a heterogeneous space. Both of them are audience-driven entertainment and while vaudevillians looked after the obstacles and opportunities of immigration, our generation faces the sad challenges in the presence of globalization. Mother didn't think vaudeville was over. Mother thought vaudeville would come back. She always thought that. Wherever she is, she probably still does. <laughs> Maybe vaudeville satisfied the established inner curiosity and the urge for entertainment. A gentle break from a long day of work and with the offer to dream big and the chance to become a star. And maybe, maybe vaudeville isn't dead yet.